Hey guys, welcome back to the Kobe Simmons Audio Experience. I have a request. In this episode, we're giving you a shout out. I'm going to talk about the business growth blueprint from best practice, but I have a favor to ask. We want to rename our podcast. So if you're listening to this podcast and you've got a suggestion for a new name for this Kobe Simmons Audio Experience or best practice podcast, send me a direct message on LinkedIn or a direct message on Instagram. DM me with a new name and the winner is going to get the kudos and the bragging rights that they helped name the best practice podcast and I will send you a best practice hoodie. So in the Southern Hemisphere, it's coming into winter. In the Northern Hemisphere, I know it gets cold for you guys up there. If I will send, if you're the winner and we choose your name for the best practice podcast, the Kobe Simmons Audio Experience, you come up with a name, we'll choose it, send me a direct message and you're in the draw to win a best practice hoodie. Lovely, warm, cozy. Okay, let's get on with it. In this episode, I wanna talk, talk about the best practice business growth blueprint. We recently launched it on our Instagram page. So if you go to my Instagram, you can get to the handle or you can go to bestpractice.biz forward slash blueprint and download your free copy. Stay tuned. Helping you to master an achiever's mindset and helping you get into success habits that are going to help you improve your little business. If you're thinking about starting a business, you're running a business, it's small, maybe it's a five-figure business, maybe it's a six-figure business, you want to turn it into a seven or even an eight-figure business. If you follow those really basic principle tips and tricks that I've put in this free business blueprint for you, it's going to set you up for success and it's going to push you, bulldoze you in fact, down that path. Okay. I want to get into a couple of things. I'm going to talk about what's in the business blueprint, but I do want you to download and check it out. Right at the beginning there, we talk about 10 success habits, really simply focusing on your morning routine. Before I recorded this podcast, I literally have been working today on revising my morning routine. I'm, I'm trying to build the perfect week formula so I can set myself up for success. It's going to help me stay focused and keep me uh, on my daily to-do list. I'm going to keep that list small, but I'm going to keep it focused. Get outside your comfort zone and up-level your game. Move your body, fuel it. In the perfect week formula, they talk about doing 20 minutes of sweaty exercise when you get up in the morning. I don't know if that's going to be for me. I'm going to probably do an hour, uh, but that's part of my perfect week formula, something I really want you to think about. Think about white spaces so you can reflect, meditate, get positive. That's a good way to set up your day. So that's kind of the start of it. Then we want to choose our team around us. Andrew Grove in his book, High Output Management, says the very first process or procedure you should write for your company, in fact, write this right now, is start mapping out your winning formula for recruitment. Now, you kind of don't even really have to do that because if you go to bestpractice.biz forward slash guides, I've done it for you. It's a free download. It's our winning formula for recruitment. Great free download at bestpractice.biz forward slash guides. Scroll down the page, you'll see the winning formula for recruitment. It's really important to choose the people around you. Even use the winning formula for recruitment for any partners that you have, anyone you're working with, you know, any outsource. If you're outsourcing to virtual assistants, you want to interview them. You want to check they can do the right thing. Don't just take the word of mouth referral from someone around you. Okay, we want to be goal-oriented and take action. There's one thing I didn't value. I didn't used to value having written goals. I was actually scared of writing down my goals because I was scared people would see how aspirational I was and kind of give me a hard time, tease me about it. And then I realized that no one really cares and just deal with the teasing, like write them down because you need them to be written down. So you need to be goal-oriented. You need to actually keep striving for and hitting those targets. You do need to balance work and life. The two most addictive emotions are anticipation and joy and so we want to think about that what can we anticipate what can we get ready for you know we, we're thinking about that positive emotion so if we can think about traditions and getting ready for things going on holidays you look forward to it that's a positive emotion it's addictive keep learning and stay relevant learning is without a doubt it's the thing that i neglected to do early on in my career and right now it is accelerating my success it's really helping me go forward and then obviously work on emotional resilience. So that's right, that that's the 10 success habits. You can read about those in the business blueprint. I wanna get right now to the good ideas checklist. I have talked about this recently in some of our YouTube videos, but it's something I wanna help you guys with is the good ideas checklist. And if you are thinking about starting a business, you're growing a business, you've got a business, you wanna improve that business, this checklist is for you. It's absolutely essential. The first and foremost, before I even get into the checklist is you're more likely to succeed, like 46% more likely to succeed if your business is in a trending industry and that trend is increasing. 
And that's from a McKinsey study of over 3,500 companies by the McKinsey Consulting Company. So you've really got to make sure that you're kind of at the front of a trend. Don't worry if there's other people out there doing it already. In my opinion, it's better to be better in a, be the best in a flooded market than outstanding in a field by yourself. Not outstanding in your field. Don't be outstanding in a field by yourself. Uh, so think about your business idea. We've got a page there of this checklist. It fills a gap in the market. It innovates. It challenges existing alternatives. It stands out. It meets customer expectations. Offers great value. Has a purpose. Harnesses your strengths. Is in a growing market and can be scaled up. So there's heaps more in the best practice business blueprint. I just wanted to jump on today, quickly talk about the, the fact that you could download that best practice business blueprint. I want you to be thinking about that side hustle, thinking about is it in a trending industry? Think about can you scale it? Does it harness your strengths? And if you really want to do a test, go and see if you can get someone to buy it from you right now. Go and see if someone will actually give you money because it means that their money is worth less to them than the thing, the product or service you've got to sell. If you can't sell it to friends and family and you can't get people around you passionate about it, it may not be a very good idea and you might be being a focus group of one. Okay, this has been a really quick episode of the Kobe Summit Audio Experience. Remember that competition. If you've got an idea for a new name for our podcast, for the Kobe Simit Audio Experience Best Practice Podcast, direct message me on Instagram or LinkedIn with your ideas and you're going to the draw to win a best practice hoodie. I will personally autograph it and send it out to you. In fact, I won't autograph it because that might devalue it. You let me know what you want, but if you're the winner and we choose your name for the podcast, I will send you a best practice hoodie to wherever you are in the world. So stay cool, stay fresh, keep improving every day. And if you don't hear me here on our podcast, you're definitely going to see us on YouTube next time on Best Practice TV. Bye for now.